Hello there, Rugby League fans. Welcome along to the ACC's Mad Monday podcast, uh, live from the Export Beer Garden studio, of course. My name is Chris Key. Joining me on the podcast today, uh, former producer, now NRL pundit, Joel Harrison. How are you today? I'm not bad, thanks. Um, good to be back. Good to yeah. be back off the off the bench once again. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you are our go-to uh, interchange player. Uh, the big show's away this week. Uh, Sakezi's filling in. Uh, Mad Monday, Di Henwood and Ben Hurley are both away this week. Sakezi and Joel are f- f- filling in. So when the big dogs go, uh, we jump straight in there and get stuck in, Joel. And... Uh you don't mind it though, eh? I don't mind. I love it. I'm uh, always ready. I've said this many times before. Always ready after watching heaps of league this weekend. So it's, uh, it's going to be a good game, a good podcast. That's that's why it's good, Joel, having you around because even if you're not on the potty, you're watching eight games of NRL regardless from start to finish. So eight games, 80 minutes every week, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and don't forget, of course, uh, Wendy's and the new pepperoni pizza burger. That is the proud sponsor of the Mad Monday podcast. And you better get in quick, folks. She's only around for a limited time and uh, the clock is ticking on that one. So go to your nearest Wendy's and get stuck into a pizza and a burger put together. Uh, but without further ado, it's time to rip into the latest round of the NRL and we'll start, of course, with Friday night's result. It was the Warriors going down to the Eels 18-28. to 28. Position. Here goes Dylan Brown. Brown. He's got Sebo on his outside. He goes by Sebo. The chases are coming. Are they going to be able to stop him? No way. No one stops the Fijian Express. Mike Acevo scores for the Eels. Yes, uh, that was a, well, it was one of several sort of uh, crucial errors that Sean Johnson made. He had, it was a really weird performance because um, I was looking for him to back up that great game against the Tigers, the first game back to Mount Smart there. He played uh, sensationally and a few of his kicks were on point in this game on Friday night. Uh, A couple of them went out on the full as well. And I think it was that moment, the nice skip pass, which to be fair, if Micah hadn't grabbed that, probably would have gone out to the wing there. And I think Cussie, uh, that was on the right, he might have scored in the corner. Um, but that, for me, Joel, was actually the turning point of the game. Yeah, I think you might have the wrong piece of audio because this is the this is the the last try of the game. But it was it was kind of similar fashion. Oh, I, you're joking? The, yeah, no, this was the one where they ran from their 20 meter line off the first tackle and then pass it to Dylan Brown and to Sevo, and then he ran 60 meters. Right. But I know I know exactly the point you're talking about though. So what's happened, Joel, is I, and I was supposed to front foot this, is I went to bed with 15 minutes remaining because oh. we were getting our asses whipped. Did you stay up for the whole thing? I was I was I was um I was pumping. I, I actually don't remember too much of the second half, but I was um Oh, it was a Friday night, wasn't it? I was charging through. I love the Friday night games, I reckon they're great. But yes. um so yeah. so you so I went to bed with 15 to go. You were on the piss massively, is what I'm gathering here. What time did you end up getting home Friday night or Saturday morning? I was a it was a three a.m. job. Nothing too big, but right. I actually did. I'll, I I missed the two Warriors tries. I missed the last two. We got an Uber to town, so because I was <laughs> so we, that, this was to make it twenty eight six. That that the audio we played, but um, it's kind of the same. It was kind of two very yeah. important turning points in the game. It was, it was, and once again, just a reminder that Mad Monday is your number one source of Warriors coverage. <laughs> uh, so, Joel, I actually really liked what I saw, and to be fair, I'd had a bit of a, a rough week in terms of sleeping. Right, so I was like. I want to watch the Warriors. Starts at 10. It'll finish at midnight. But if it's cooking, you know, and the Eels are a team that we can get past. They're known to be a bit hollow, especially against the bad teams there. They got beaten by uh, the Bulldogs earlier in the season. I was like, if we could put together a good game, I'm staying up for the whole thing. It was sort of that second half uh, where things started to change a wee bit. The Warriors lost all their momentum. Because at the start of the game, it was phenomenal. There was uh, an awesome, I think Will Penasini was uh, about to go over for a try. Uh, Our boys not only stopped them, but three of them jumped in there, drove them out over the sideline. And I was like, that's the kind of intensity you like to see. eh?" So you uh, were you like me that you were quite happy with what you saw early on? It was good, yeah. uh, They had so many, I think there was a point in the 10th minute that they just had so many sets back to back. And we were defending all of them. That Yeah, we didn't let anything in. There was a big moment when it was like Reese Walsh, Chanel and Montoya, I believe, that took out Penasini. Mm. And uh, then the floodgates sort of opened, but going into halftime, 10-6, it was deserved. And I think the Warriors, they were playing well. Um, It's just, yeah, after that 40 to 55 minute mark, we let in two or three tries Mm. and uh, you, you just can't do that. You yeah. can't do that against a team like the Eels, who are who they they have lost easily before, but they are still a top five team at the moment. You've still got Dylan Brown, you know Gutho. You've got Mitch Moses in there. They're too classy for you to ever let off, uh, basically. And I was ex- extremely impressed with uh, Marcelo Montoya for a lot of the game. Uh, I think we're both. 
you're obviously steamed when you were messaging the group there that I was messaging <laughs> as well. But, um, you know, uh, he runs with so much intensity. He's the kind of guy that's almost like a Josh Adokar, even though he's on the wing, the way he runs the ball, the talk that he does when he's not swearing and saying bad stuff. Um, it's really positive for the Warriors. And he had one mistake where he dropped the ball and Gutho scored a try, which was like... <sighs> but other than that, I, I really like uh, Marcelo Montoya as someone to, you know, stick around in the Warriors for a wee while. Yeah, and it seems like he is committed because I believe, yeah, his, he's, um, he's moving over his family to New Zealand as well, which That's is right. good. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. fiance's moving, and she, she works here, doesn't she? Yeah, she's joining uh, joining the NZME team as well. So, so the um, hits, isn't it? Yeah, the hits. We might have to get Marcelo Montoya on the podcast. Could be That could be something for next year. Absolutely. But um, yeah, so I, I think the way he runs, and he did it at Mount Smart as well, him and, and DWZ, even yep. though they're not the most the strongest runners in the world, but they show heart every time. Yeah. Um, it was disappointing that he dropped that ball that led to a try, but about a play before that, he smoked Gutherson so hard. Oh, that's Gutherson right. was bloody chundering on the field as well. It was oh. like a under-85s match. Yeah, because, I mean, the last Warriors guy to chunder on the field was Matt Lodge on the sideline, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, I think that was the same game where Kane Evans um, came off the bench and swung at people. Um, yes, so Gutho, he got hit so hard he vomited. And Gutho's such a tough, like, gritty player, and he's so yeah. safe. To see him... Um, you know, bringing up chunks like that, thanks to Marcelo. I enjoyed it very much. But for then Gutho to, you know, score a try off the drop ball from Marcelo and to play the full game, much respect to him. One player I was extremely impressed with from the Eels was uh, Marata Niukore, who's coming to yeah. the Warriors next year. He was playing in Jersey 13, and he was the same as Marcelo, just like running hard and running with purpose. I quite like the look of him. That's a, no, that's a very good signing. And I, I, I'm not sure if he's going to play in the back row or the midfield, but I, I think... <laughs> Yeah, I that's he, a good he's one. sort of like the new Ewan Aitken now that Ewan Aitken's going, which is which is good because he, he looks like he's almost better than Ewan Aitken as well. Well, he, he wants to be here, which is yeah. the most crucial. New and Aitken, we'll call him. Uh, <laughs> because you're right, for the Eels, he's always on the bench sort of covering and he'll come in at centre if like Wong or Blake's having a shocker or something. Yeah. And he'll come in the back row as well. So I do really like him. And then also a guy who we should actually... <laughs> Both freaking back rowers in the yes. Eels, uh, Sean Lane and Isaiah Papali'i, both former Warriors. Pap uh, Papali'i in particular was extremely strong. The Warriors did a good job stopping Sean Lane on Friday, I thought, because yep. he's been devastating, uh, his running with the ball and his offloads and stuff this season. But Isaiah Papali'i, his try, he runs so freaking hard. He's so big and stocky. He reached out, he scored it with one hand, then he unloaded a fat Kamehameha for try July. Uh, that was probably, even though it was against the Warriors, it was probably one of my favourite moments of the match. It was, yeah, and it's, it's a massive, massive, of rub into the team that uh, didn't have a spot for him two years ago. Now he's, I know, right? Now he's gone over there and he's uh, yeah, he's one of the best forwards in the game. I actually noticed the VB hardworking index. There's like a leaderboard Hard for earned, that. Yep. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure. Do you know how that works? Nah, but see what I do is I usually go along the export hard earned index, which is a lot more easy to understand. It's I think it's meters covered. Uh, Actually, no, because it's always forwards, eh? Yeah, it's always forwards. So I know somebody with tackles running and stuff. Yeah, because I know the intensity meter. We were talking yep. about this state of O is meters over time. But yeah, they must take into account tackles, the amount of work you get through, and meters, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but a, a promising sign for that is that it was Tarpani, Papali'i, and James Fisher Harris, three Kiwis at the top of that leaderboard. Oh, Tarpani from the Raiders. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Awesome. So, and out of the whole league, the Kiwi, three Kiwis, three of the hard work, hardest working forwards, which is cool. Yeah, so, I mean, if only there was a way for us to, you know, sign them while they're in New Zealand and yeah. develop them, and then we've got, you know, some of the best players in the entire game. Because um, theoretically, every single player that's playing in that amazing Kiwi side we've got at the moment, mm. they all grew up wanting to play for the Warriors. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we should be able to land them. Um, but, hey, let's not go down uh, that track. <laughs> uh, quick shout-out before we move on. Um... Dan Ganane, comment, commentator for Fox. Yeah. Uh, regular Mad Monday listener. I have no idea. Uh, but I actually really was impressed the fact that he's obviously had some sort of um, lessons on how to pronounce people's names properly. That's good. He was saying Niu Kore instead of Niu Kore. That is, that is, that's great. That's very progressive from an Australian commentator I as well. I, I was noticing in the Raiders game, they're still calling him Bala. Matthew Timoko. Timaku, that's <laughs> that's struggling with it. Yeah, eh? yeah, it seems like it's very easy, but I, I guess we've lived in New Zealand our whole life. So yeah, yeah, I mean a little bit, of, but if you're getting, they'll be on big dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Should, and there's fifty percent of the players are from Maori or Pacific Island heritage. Yeah, you kind of got to learn. Like had an hour course, and they'll be sweet as. What's his name? Dan Nagain. Ganane. Ganane. Yeah, he's the man. Actually, he's probably my favorite commentator, and he was even saying because um, we've been having a lot of laughs at uh, them trying to say Junior Barlow. Yeah, um, and they've got. Um, Who's the Jackson? No, who's the other? Maybe it was Jackson. Yeah, Jack Jackson Bowler. 
Bolo, yeah, but he was actually whoever was saying his name over the weekend was saying it correct as well. So I've got a feeling that um, a lot of people are actually getting maybe told off and told to clean up their act a bit. Hopefully, you you, you would hope so, as you said, of of, of half the league, Kiwis, yeah. Pacific Islanders, and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I they can, hopefully more commentators, especially Andrew Voss, can uh, can uh, yeah get Be- it into in line. Because the thing is, oh, I love them. I love yeah. the commentators. Everything they do, they're fantastic. The hype, you know, yeah. everything. It's just that one thing. So if they do that, literally, my favorite commentary. Yeah. Other than the ACC, of course. Of um, course, mate. Of course. Who pays you and I the massive dollars. Um, before we uh, move on to the rest of the games from the round, Joel, is there anything else you'd like to say about the WAS? It's kind of at the point of the season where we're not going to make the top eight and you just hope a few good what? performances. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just can, all you can hope for is a few good performances. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool to see Reese Walsh do some good things while he's still here for... However many games, I'm actually not even too sure how many games are left in the in the rest of the year. I think we've got year. about six games left. Yeah, but it, it, I'm excited for the Storm game at home next week and then the Bulldogs and Thailand. The home games are going to be really cool. I'll be at all of them. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be there as well. Oh, Mad Monday will be there. Don't you worry yeah, about that. Yeah, that's, that's going to be good. But then, I, I don't know, just a few good performances is always we can hope for. And uh, yeah, maybe see the likes of some players who are coming back next year start doing some good things like mm. Karen and Toho Harris, et cetera. Yep. Adam Fanua Blake as well. Yep. He's, he's had that foot issue, which I think he had a foot issue midway through the season. He missed a month and he could have either had the surgery and been out for the rest of the season or, you know, one of those sort of workaround jobs where it's still a bit of a niggle. Yeah. I think he needs to get that sorted over the off season and be back to being one of the best front rowers. Yeah, exactly. And I also think one of my favorite players, probably one of my, yeah, my new favorite player in the Warriors, Freddie Lussick. Great guy. Really? Yeah. Something about him. He's just, he's, I think he might be the new Bunty R4. I think he might get a bit of a cult following. He, uh, at the Warriors, the homecoming game, he gave his, his jersey away. It was like his second ever game for the Warriors, and he gave he his gave it away. to some kid in the crowd. And I saw him strutting around with his kid off. And uh, he's a he's a dashing guy, Freddie Lussick. So right, he's my new favorite player in the Warriors. So is that because you want to have a hoon on him, or because he's like great at playing league? But above, I don't know. He just <laughs> he seems like a great guy. Him, Josh Curran, a few Aussies in the fold as well. So. You got to have a few. Uh, Wade exactly. Egan. Wade Egan. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Freddie Lussick. Yeah, man. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mine was actually one thing I was quite happy to see was Ed Cossey actually had quite a good game. Yeah. Because um, he's been tearing it up in the old Queensland Cup there, scoring shitloads of tries. And he came in and, and Di pointed it out when we did our little Thursday potty last week. He was worried about Micah up against him. And sure, Micah had a great game. Yeah. But it was through no fault of Ed Cussey, I thought. Yeah. It was good to see him get over the line, uh, consolation try as well. Totally. He scored, yeah. And he like, he ran hard. He ran over the top of Gutho to score that try, which will be good for his confidence as well. So, uh, yes. Him. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And also, uh, Marcelo scored the, there's a slick backline move in the first yeah. half where we scored our first try. It was awesome. Even Jack Murchie, that last try, he just cut straight through. And yeah. it's like, oh, we why, can do why it. can we do this 20 minutes earlier rather than conceding tries? But e- hey, exactly. What's in the past is, uh, is in the past. We're very good at, at, as Warriors fans at just deleting everything from the past, from our brain, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, actually, for example, uh, the Warriors are taking on the Melbourne Storm next time they're at home, which yeah. is next Friday, I believe. It is, yeah. Uh, what was the score last time we played Melbourne Storm? Wasn't it like 70-10? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we're going to be there fizzed up because the Melbourne Storm are on their first ever three-game losing streak since like 2015 or something. And they're looking depleted as well. They got yeah. Bloody, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah, that later. We'll but, talk about that later. But oh, go the Warriors. She's all coming up wow if you ask me. Um, before we move on to the rest of the games of the round, we'll take a quick break here on the Mad Monday podcast. Not guilty, Your Honour. Yeah, what are you getting the ref's room number, mate? Welcome back to the Mad Monday podcast here at the Export Beer Garden Studio. Uh, and before we rip into the rest of the games from, uh, shit, what round is it? Round 18 in the NRL. God, she's flying by there, Joel. Uh, just a quick shout out to our friends at Wendy's and the new pepperoni pizza burger. It's here for a limited time, folks, so get stuck into it now. If you can't decide between a pizza and a burger, just get both and... Have a hoon on them, like Joel having a hoon on Lussick from the Warriors. Um, time to move on to the rest of the games of the round now. And I'll be honest, Joel, I was extremely excited about the first game of the entire round. It was the Cowboys taking on the Sharks, with uh, the Sharks getting, in my opinion, a bit of an upset win, 26 points to 12. Sione Katoa, though, busts them from the scrum. The hammer is flying. He's running away from the hammer, and that's well advised. Another try for Sione Katoa and the Sharks in control in Townsville in a top four blockbuster. It was a top four blockbuster. Sione Katoa there who just tore them up. 80 metre run as we heard off the back of the scrum through some weak defence. That is, that's the sort of thing Todd Payton, if he had any, would be tearing his hair out over because 
the Cowboys have just been so good defensively all year, and that was quite a weak try, you know, for them to let in. So I don't think he'll be happy with that performance from his team. Yeah, I, I agree. But in saying that, half his team was pretty much exactly. the reason the reason why Queensland won. And I think like I don't think Dearden or a couple of others that I were playing as well. So I, no, Cotter either. Yeah, you know, Cotter, yeah, a lot yeah. of those guys. A so. lot of the players and like. To even come that close, because I was watching the game, pretty much most of the game they were in it. Yeah, you, you absolutely. Thought, and it looked like they were going to win, like Tom Alolo running so hard, uh, Drinkwater playing great, Robson, et cetera, all, the, all these guys. Peter Hicku, he yeah. is, he's looking very sharp um, as well. But I, I don't think the Cowboys should be too concerned about it. Like They're still sitting second in the table, and mm. uh, the Sharks, very good side. They didn't have almost anyone out because of Origin, I think, as well. Mm. So, um, Talakai yeah. was the only one. Talakai, yeah. And he had he, a shocker. He had an absolute shocker. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, they, they, they're they great. Katoa and uh, Molitalo are both playing exceptional at the moment. So, I tell um, you what, like seriously, every single game, both of those wingers score a try each at yeah, least. Like yeah. they are just, uh, both sides of the Sharks' back line are just in such fine form. It surprises me that they aren't higher up the table. They've had these weird struggles. Yeah, they're actually coming third at the moment, though. They're tied third with the Cowboys and I think the Storm as well on 26 points. Right, what am I whinging about then? Yeah. It's still pretty good. <laughs> um, for, for like, If you had to see the start of the year, both of those teams in the top four, it would have been uh, very interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think Toddy Payton should be too concerned. I'm sure the Cowboys will bounce back because they are looking slick. Yeah, and they are sort of the Panthers of the Queensland side where their team was decimated in order to field Queensland's entire state of origin, winning state of origin side as well. So What a game it was as well. Oh. What, what a game it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, righto, mate, righto. And just quickly, uh, Luciano Leilua played a full game in the back row and he looks about four times as good playing for the Cowboys as he did for the Tigers. It's almost yep. like he wasn't really trying. Uh, the, <laughs> the next game of the round was an absolute thrashing. 80 points were scored in total. It was the Roosters taking down the Dragons 54 points to 26. Oh no, now the knee. Oh, well that was at Manu. What's he done there? He sold the dummy with a knee injury. It's a fake knee injury. That is set up and thrown for Momorowski. We've all come to a stop. The doctor's almost out there, and Manu has taken off to set up the try. Oh, man, Joey Skucks. What? Him and Latrell Mitchell, just incredible performances over the weekend. Joey, in particular, has been one of the form players of the entire competition this year. I think you could almost say he is one of the best players, if not definitely top three at the moment. Well, I, want, I want to say the best player, but... But who's been... But, so Teddy's been good, right? He's not yeah. been superstar good. Yeah. Latrell's been amazing, but he's been out for a lot of it. Tommy yeah. Turbo's out. Yeah. Who's playing better? Pappenhausen's like, been injured. Cleary and... Yeah, like but Cleary this, but. is playing sh- solid for Cleary, yeah. which is still amazing, but he hasn't been like dominating like he did last season. I know, yeah. I, I, no, actually, you could say best individual player at the moment. Yeah. Joey Skaksmanu. He is... Lethal on attack. And yeah. And, uh, that was a pretty funny clip of Vossi before saying, he's had a fake injury. I don't think he had a fake injury. I think he, he looked like he cramped up and then he was just like, I'm just going to run. There's a massive gaping hole here. Yeah, because it was, I don't think anyone's actively f- got time on an NRL field to think, I'm going to fake an injury and run <laughs> yeah. through. Like, it'll, yeah, it was, you're right. Sudden cramp or like a twinge and then the the Red Sea parted and he just hooned through there through a scucky no look. Uh, Joey Manu offload, as he always does. He also set up an absolute doozy of a try to uh, Victor Radley as well. Um, same thing. He's playing in the halves. You know, he's a centre, and he's so uh, he's such a good utility as well. He tears through, throws the scuckiest no-look yeah. pass to Radley, who scores under the post. He's such a silk. I think he had four try involvements, so yeah. he was heavily involved. I think he scored about 180 fantasy points or something, which is just ridiculous. Uh, although my favourite part of the game, Joel, I think it was yours as well, uh, Zach Lomax, who is pretty much a professional bell end, um, <laughs> he intentionally kicked the ball as hard as he could over the post. It went over the scoreboard onto the road. And a great New Zealander, I like to think, he uh, returned the ball, didn't he? Lomax has put out the traffic. Look out. The car's... Oh, yes, that uh-huh. person's going to get the ball. Hey! That's, he that's a beauty! Oh, he's oh, picking it back in. in. Back. It's, 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 oh. That's one of the plays of the year. <laughs> Vossi, emotional. <laughs> that's Vossi. I think that's him at his best. But yeah. it, was, it was great. Some, some, some great New Zealand, as you called him, across the road. Does a good Samaritan move. Tries to kick it across the road. Gets about five metres in yeah. the air. But what a, what, a, what a moment. What a moment. Play of the year, Vossi said as well. <laughs> I, do, I, I love it because, you know, 
he's obviously driving past thinking, far out, man, there's a game on, how good. Sees a ball come over, you've got to stop, grab the ball, fantastic. And just a bit of advice for if you're, you know, he looked like he was probably 50 or something maybe. Yeah. He hadn't kicked a footy in a while. Good soul patch on him as well, like you noticed oh, that. Great soul patch. Soul patch and the beady as well, running a real Limp biscuit set up, which is really good to see. But if you haven't played footy in a while and you used to play back in the day, don't go for the spiral kick. Yeah. The way he was holding it was going for a sweet spiral punt. You got to kick it on the point of the ball and just get the accuracy, not the distance. <laughs> I think I think it would have been great if he had just got it out of his car, picked up the ball, got it back in his car, and driven off. That I think that <laughs> that would have been the moment of the year. Imagine that. that fucking. <laughs> you did right, actually. That would have been so much funnier. Oh. <sighs> How oh, good is Cody Ramsey though? Before, or how how le- lethal does he look? Le- yeah. yeah. So Cody Ramsey's one of those dudes, almost like uh, Jaden Campbell from the Titans. Reese yeah. Walsh, if he can get on the back of a big Ford pack and a good line, yeah, he could be extremely lethal. Um, and also, aren't the Dragons one above us on the table? Yeah, they're one above, but still six points. Those are technically th- three wins ahead. Yeah, of us. they're three wins. Also, the Roosters are three wins ahead, and they're coming ninth at the moment. I think that really tells you that. The Roosters are the clear cut off from the good teams and the bad teams. You know yeah. what I mean? Because for them to thrash a team who's one spot or two spots beneath them by uh, and put fifty four on them, yeah, it really tells a lot about uh, the current setup of the table. Yeah. Um, the next game of the round, though, the Manly Sea Eagles absolutely pantsing the Knights, forty two points to twelve. Goes to walk. He just charges the old running back play. He hands it off to Lachlan Croker. He plays one straight back past the bowler. And it's four runs and two points, more importantly, for Manly here tonight. Yeah, it's some sort of an offload there from Walker, hitting the ball at pace, just spins it. Some sort of an offload there from Walker. I love Locker Roach. Um, so Manly getting a pretty convincing win over a struggling night side once again. Uh, this is one of the games of the round I didn't actually watch. Caught up with the highlights, though. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me was um, Jason Saab, who is a player that I don't like, right? He's super quick, he's super tall, and last year when Tommy Turbo was throwing all sorts of money balls to him, he was phenomenal, and he's been kind of shit house all season for Manly. Uh, he scored a crap load of tries. Did he get three? I think he got a hat trick. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, um, and he's put in space and he's away, and he's, that's what you want in a winger, that's fine. Defensively, he's not that great, but whatever. But one thing I noticed is when he was sprinting away, old, um, what's the... Dom it? Young. Dom Young. Yeah. He is just as fast. He almost... I thought he was going to catch him as well. Yeah. He, he was, it was very unlucky to not clip his ankles in that try, and then... Saab did the classic try July selfie for the crowd as well, which is a massive rubbing. But yeah, <laughs> it, w- it would have been great to see him, see him get chased down. Yeah, because Dom Young, do you remember last week or the week before uh, when Cody Nicorima was right by the try line and was running and he just came in and absolutely cleaned him up yeah. from out of nowhere? Dom Young, I think, is a bit of a future gun. Yeah, I agree. And if he could get on the back of a decent back line, if, if the Knights can sort their shit out. Like, I mean, the, at the start of the season, they won the first three games and were top of the table. So They did, yeah. I, and speaking of pace, I actually saw a, a top 10 fastest players in the NRL. It was like based on that Telstra tracker they have mm. on them. Obviously, number one was Jason Saab. Um, but an interesting one, number 10 was Villami Vailia from the oh, Warriors. Oh, from the Waz. Yeah, I've, I've heard reps. He's only 19 or 20, I believe, as well. And I've heard he's very fast, and he was yeah number 10 there. So that is a... <laughs> promising side, I guess. Yeah, you take it. You take you take whatever leaderboard you can get at the moment. I love yeah, I love how the Warriors one person in the, you know, fastest speed ever is in our wider squad. Yeah. <laughs> Just played like four games all season. We'll uh, take what we can get, Joel. We'll take it. We'll take it in a big um, way. One quick thing as well, which was quite uh, comical, was when the old kickoff that landed on top of the, the post padding. Did you see uh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. I have never seen anything as like no one could recreate that if they tried a thousand times. You know what I mean? Oh, Nathan Cleary probably could if he tried a thousand times. Yeah, right. actually, or Shawnee J or like Tohu Harris or yeah. like, you know. I know, you know, it was a cool, it was a uh, yeah, very unique moment mm. from uh, from the weekend. Oh, it was the moment of the round, <laughs> moment of the year. Next game, though, uh, in round 18 of the NRL, it was the Titans taking on Broncos, a uh, battle of Brisbane. The Broncos getting the win, 16 points to 12. This is it. It must happen on this play. Sexton, the chip kick. Oh, Ricky takes it. And the Broncos, they have that winning habit and they find a way to hold on. Another win for Kevy. Another win for the Broncos. Yes, the Broncos there without a few of their uh, origin guns. Also no Payne Haas, right? So um, under strength, still able to get past the Titans who are just struggling so much right now. Um and the Titans, for some reason, I mean, I know Ben Hurley massively backs them and has had an absolute shock of predicting they'll be in the top four. But I don't – like, they are they are so similar to the Warriors in that yeah. they can recruit guns like David Fafita, who needs to deliver himself. But also, 
if you put him into any of these top level systems, he would be the best player in the whole game. You know what I mean? But they yep. just can't get it out of him. Even yeah, Tino, who played incredible in Origin, massive, yeah. massive grub, but huge intensity. And he's not really doing doing a heck of a lot for them at the moment as well, which uh, which isn't great to see. No, and I mean that's the thing. Tino Faso Malawi, he's the kind of guy who they could be they could lose every game of the season. He's going to go and play seventy, running as hard as he can, you know, tackling as many people as he can, being as grubby as he can, as you mentioned, because uh, he's a Queensland grub. But um, you need a guy like that to then be surrounded by players that are willing to almost do the same. You can never do the, the exact same amount, but. Yeah. You know, guys that'll see that and it'll ignite them as well. But it just doesn't seem to be happening for the Titans. Um, I believe you saw a funny clip over the weekend. Is that I right? Did. Yeah, yeah. It feels like the Broncos have some belief. And uh, uh, this was from the start of the season. Fletch and Hindy, their show, talking to Herbie Farnsworth and another Farnworth. Guy, Farnworth, sorry. That, a yeah. very good-looking English guy. And uh, it seems like they have a bit of a belief in the system. Have a listen to this. Boys, honestly, how are Brisbane going to go? Better. This year. Whereabouts? A lot better. Give us a position. You can't aim for much less than top four. Top four? Yeah. He came second last. So? I only room to improve, isn't it? Yeah, but you've got to have... You know what a smart goal is? got to be realistic. Exactly. Realistic. Smart. You're, you're yeah. not playing the comp if you want to come top eight, really, Specific, measurable, attainable. So what, you play the comp and then say... Realistic. What, bottom eight? You can't go from second last to top four. Why not? Because it's not going to happen. Top Herbie. four, by the end. <laughs> aim for the top four, and, if, and then if we miss that, we'll just land in the eight. <laughs> That's aged really badly for Fletch and Hindy. Not in a get cancelled them sort of way, but in a the Broncos proving them how to do it way. Yeah, and I guess that is that comes from belief because if you had asked Warriors players that at the start of the year, I don't think they'd be saying they're going to be in the top four. No, but um, yeah, I reckon we could be could be on the verge of a bit of a, dy- a dynasty dynasty from uh, from the Broncos with Reece Walsh going to the system next year as well. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they've got a lot of very good young players. Oh, they do. I just – I say, said it a million times. I just love Pat Carrigan. Like, yep. he's just, he's the Tino – literally the same haircut. Um, he is the Tino of the Broncos with that sort of team around him, which it will ignite them. Yep. And you got Ezra Mam, who's mm. so exciting and young. You've got Adam um, who – Reynolds. Reynolds. How did I forget <laughs> that? Uh, Adam Reynolds, who, when he's healthy and playing, he's so good at yep. guiding them around. Herbie Farnsworth. Payne Haas. Oh, they've got a great squad, and they're literally doing what I wish the Warriors would do. Exactly. Um, but maybe they've got Fletch and Hindy at the Warriors managing them. It's like, hey, maybe we could be top four. Nah, be more realistic, mate. Yeah. 11th. 11th, mate. Uh, 11th this season. That's more attainable. Not guilty, Your Honour. Yeah, what are you getting the ref room number, mate? The next game of the round, it was the West's Tigers almost upsetting the Panthers, uh, 18 points to 16. Any hole to Joe Harris. Beautiful. He stormed through a hole. He sure did. Fisher Harris, who should come and play for the Warriors. Um, I mean, this game is, the Panthers still got the win. And what I liked about this is Ivan Cleary just said, you know what? Eight blokes who played for New South Wales have the week off. You had a rough win over uh, a rough a rough loss over State of Origin. Loss, yep. I'm sure we can get past the bottom team in the entire competition. And then the likes of Sean O'Sullivan, who I don't personally like, but you know you got all these guys like him and Kurt Falls that come in, uh, George Jennings as mm. well, and they just step up. And sure, it was a close one, but they still got the win. I know that was good. And uh, Fisher Harris captaining, I believe, the side, and yeah. him leading from the front, literally getting that last try mm. that got them the win. And now they're eight points clear at the top of the table. With 34 <sighs> points, and it's looking like it's going to be a back-to-back Penrith at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing is going to be who's going to be seeing them in the finals because now yeah. that Melbourne are massively shaky, mm. you, it, like it could literally be like a Cowboys or a Sharks or Brock, like we just I just don't know. Yeah. Which is, means the rest of the season and the playoffs are looking so damn exciting, and hopefully someone can uh, at least take down the Panthers one more time before the uh, playoffs start. I think they're probably going to be wanting to lose as well, at least one game. Alleviate a bit of pressure. Yeah, a couple years ago they just went straight and they didn't lose for a long time and mm. then – Dadouge. They got the they got the, they got the loss. <laughs> they got dadouge, did they? Uh, by the storm there. Yep. So yeah, that's a good point actually. <laughs> Speaking of the storm, uh, they went down to the Raiders, twenty points to sixteen. Now Fogarty, Elliott, Tomoko. Here he is. Schiller puts in a little kick. He might regather. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> that's like something off WWE there. Um, <laughs> that try from James Schiller. James Schiller, I think, who I've never heard of. Yeah, he was wearing the 15 jersey. I've got no idea who he is. And it, that was awesome. Like, there was no way I would have put a kick in if that was me. Um, and for him to just ground that was fantastic. Uh, once again, kudos for even trying to say Timoko correctly. Um, but the Raiders getting a win over the Storm, it brings a lot of joy to my heart. 
Joel, uh, would have brought a lot of joy to Ricky Stewart's heart. How are you feeling about this result? Well, it moves the Raiders up to the 10th spot. They're tied one win off the back with uh, yeah, the Roosters and the Dragons I'm off the 8. And it looks like they could actually make the 8. Like If they're beating teams like Storm, and uh, yeah, they seem to be definitely better in this half of the season. So you never know. I, I think the Raiders, they could be, they could be looking to, uh, to shake some things up and get that 8th spot this year. And I was mm. also massively pissed off because I went 7 from 8 and tipping this week and uh, oh, really? I thought the Storm was definitely going to win I thought I was like there's no way they lose the Raiders and uh, that was the one that cost me the perfect round and so you, bonus points you tipped against the Warriors of course <laughs> you would be yeah, I've got to the point where I got about yeah two two out of ten for the first ten voting for the Warriors or tipping for the Warriors because so, you uh, were like a staunch always tip the Warriors kind of guy yep yeah I was and it's, it's weird I've, I've really been doing way better in, the, in my tipping comp since I stopped doing that as well so um <laughs> Yeah, not too sure about that one. No, it's all right, mate. You, you know, that's the real world catching up with you. Now, um, the Storm were, they're massively, like, they lost Ryan Pappenhausen, who's yeah. split his patella in half, which just is a gruesome injury. That dude is super injury prone. But yeah. it's also injuries that I don't think you can do much about. Like, remember when he got absolutely decked by Tyrell Fuma and yeah. Maono and then missed, like, half a season with head knock issues? Like kneecap on kneecap, it's such a freak injury. Mm. Um, I feel sorry for Pappenhausen because he's one of the best players in the entire game when he's on form. You've got the the, the cheese or the rotten cheese who's on stand down for mouthing off. Yeah. Um, Munster's pretty much the only one there. And you you also have got to remember that they've lost all these other blokes like... Um, Xavier Coates, he's still out? Z Xavier Coates is out. Yeah. Um, they've lost... Uh, what's the name of the big chap who's their prop? Um, Nelson Osofa Solomon? No, white dude, Welch. Christian Welch, yeah, yeah, Christian yeah. Welch. The, he, they lost him early on. They even lost um, Jennings. Is it not George... Robert Jennings? Rob Jennings, Rob yeah. Jennings. They lost him. Like, they've lost so many players that I think we've got to stop looking at the Storm now, how we've looked at them over the past few years, and think they're actually limping a bit like the Roosters are. Yeah. Do you know how long Pappenhausen's out for? No, but it's the rest of the season. Oh, really? Yeah, like oh, you can't. Yeah, yeah, a split and half kneecap. She's, yeah. she's all over, yeah, mate. that's not good. I also noticed something. I saw Nick Meany, who has been playing good, and he's fit into the Storm system. But I, I saw him do a, an error that – that the Warriors would do it, the Storm wouldn't do it. He was taking it off the kickoff and he lifted his foot. So he took the ball out when he was actually trying to, like, the, oh, ball, the ball was to going go out dead. the full. Yeah, yeah. So he, and he didn't, he got that wrong, which really would have pissed off uh, Bellamy. Bellamy, as yeah. As well. And that's just like an error that this, the Melbourne Storm of the past wouldn't normally make as well. Yeah. And Nick Meany, I mean, Fair play to him. He's, he's come from the Bulldogs where that's totally acceptable. Like, yeah. You know, they're patting you on the back and saying, hey, mate, thanks for having a crack anyway. Um, <laughs> but the uh, storm struggling for the first time in seven years. It's bloody good to see. The final game of the round was actually a low-key throbber. We'll call it a semi. It was the Rabbitohs getting a win over the Bulldogs, 36 points to 28. Pro big offload. Beautiful. Mitchell. Look at Big Latrell. Mitchell. Mitchell. It is all Latrell Mitchell. Awesome. Oh, that is awesome, Vossi. You're dead right. Latrell Mitchell there, who is having a Tom Trebojevic esque comeback from injury. The the games he's played since coming back, because I I thought Joel that he's going to be well, he's a big lad, right? Yeah. Um, and when he first switched to centre, it took him half a season to get his sort of legs underneath him in that position and uh, start to really make an impact. He has come back from Philly, where he's getting this mysterious ankle treatment or whatever the hell it was, and he is literally. Being one of he's up there with Joey Manu right now as the best player in the in the whole comp. Yeah, and he absolutely he threw the fox. Like I've never seen the fox yet thrown like that. Mm. He just folded him the one arm, the Corey Jane, don't argue. And uh yeah, the <laughs> fox who's a very passionate player, which I love, but he just got absolutely folded there. He did. Um it's an inter it's interesting though. I'm not sure because it was only an eight point loss, a very high scoring match for the Bulldogs. I'm not sure if they're getting better. The Rabbitohs just had a few people out, but... Um, I think the Bulldogs are, like, when you look at the tries they were scoring, like, um, for old party at Paul Vaughan's place to score, like, <laughs> he scored an absolute screamer of a try, you know, and it's Matt Burton, it's 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 it, all the things that they purchased, like, Josh Adokar, Matt Burton, bringing them in, um, Tavita Pangai Jr. is playing really yeah. well, I love Raymond Faitala Mariner being back, he yeah. is so awesome, he only plays 60 minutes, but... He's literally a starting back row on my super coach side because he just gets through so much work, offloads, post contact. They've got all these awesome guys. They've also got Luke Matt Thompson, Burden. who's yeah, Matt Burton, of course. Yeah. Um, they've also got Luke Thompson, who is coming back from the UK. He's been over there for family matters and stuff. So they've actually got a super like well rounded Ford pack. Yeah, um, their hooker, who unfortunately is leaving to the Dolphins, Jeremy Marshall King. Like they've got quite a nice setup going on. Don't they also have though? Sorry, don't they also have Reed Marnie and Viliami Kikau coming? To the fold? Yes. So that 
seriously, I know you predicted, remember when you were like, I think you were quite steamed at the start <laughs> of the season and you were like, Chris, top four Bulldogs, all right? I, I said 2023, top four Bulldogs, man. I no, think, did I think you? 2023, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been up. Okay, all right, because I, I remember it being 2022, but if, that's actually a good prediction because yeah. when you look at what they've got on paper and how they are slowly turning that sinking ship around, yeah. I am quite excited about the future of the Bulldogs. Um, and one quick thing, it was good to see uh, young Declan Casey, who, do you remember he made his debut a couple of weeks ago, dropped the ball three times, then got stretched off? Yeah. <laughs> he came back, he scored a try, they still lost, but he scored a try, sure, he accidentally headbutted the ground and dug his nose in when he did it, but it was just good to see him, you know, a bit of a redemption story after one of the worst debuts I've ever seen, um, and Alex Johnson scoring twice in a minute at the end of the game there too. Classic, uh, just really really getting up the leaderboard for most tries, oh my as God. he does every year. That left side of the Rabbitohs, even without Latrell, like he was scoring, now Latrell's back, it's just a double or a triple every night for Alex Johnson because uh, it was 28 all when he scored those two tries, so yeah. he effectively won them the game, which is bloody good to see. Uh, Joel, that actually does it for the Mad Monday podcast today. You and I will be back in tomorrow at some stage to do a quick team list, look over the teams uh, for the Warriors. Who are the Warriors playing this week? The Raiders. Oh, which, uh, yeah. Just beat the Storm, right, okay. Yeah, but I reckon we got them, mate. I reckon, I reckon we got them 13 plus as well, but we can talk about that more tomorrow. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so, Teamless Tuesday from Mad Monday tomorrow, which is Wednesday, featuring myself and Joel Harrison. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry, thank you very much, Export, and thank you very much, I'm Wendy's. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Australia without... He's not Australian.